r slash sex workers. Dang Zag Nutsmussen says. This is how you talk to them. Included photo. Rami0507 says. Food is also something natural that God gave us. Let me try this argument next time I go to the supermarket and see how that goes. Teladine Black underscore says. He's probably number one on the tricks list. Emotional Empress says. No money, no chat. No cheeks, and certainly no clapbacks. That's my motto. Redand Black Play says. That is a great username. Disho45 says. Food is natural, but we don't get that for free. X1751 says. 460 million people in the US. At least 30% of them are a shats. Grizzly Irimba says. Dafuk is dude wanting that's 5 grand. R slash sex workers. Far underscore rad underscore 3003 says. Sex work is starting to scare me. I keep hearing about client stealth thing, hobbyists looking for BBFS, and I personally had a client strangle me, until I popped a blood vessel in my eye, it was regular choking, but he blatantly ignored my safe word and went harder, clients getting robbed regularly, clients robbing, what's going on? Has it always been like this? I started sex workers, 3 years ago as a means of survival, it still is due to some health issues, but it seems like things have gotten worse over the time in the field. Edit, I have a BDSM fetish, and I've been trained in martial arts, since I was 5. If I want to engage in kink, that is my right, as long as consensuality is established beforehand. It was. If someone violates a person's right to consensuality, it is not the fault of the other party. Skiz off all life says. It's always been a high risk industry, but since Foster slash Sester, Covid, and the whole Manosphere slash Insul slash Trad movement things have taken nose dive. Clients are misbehaving like never before, and I have a bad, bad feeling things are not going to get any better. It's a big part of the reason why I have decided to lay low. Things are just too volatile right now. Far underscore rad underscore 3003 says. They are getting really out of hand. I've looked at some of these hobbyist sites and the things they discuss are horrific. They talk about ways to violate slash harm slash scams was with the excitement of taking a trip to Disneyland. It's the main reason I won't put up ads. Mistress Royale says. I think it's always been like that, it's just now we hear more about it. I have a security camera outside, and I screen all clients. Just do what you must do to protect yourself. I also have hidden pepper sprays in various places in my apartment. Fakislanting says. I no longer offer kink it can be done safely with partners IRL, but I find clients that are seeking kink are sometimes just men that hate women and want to harm them. If you offer, kink I'd stick to dom only services less physical labor to emo. I'm sorry that happened to you, it's the worst when regulars push boundaries. Upstairs cut 83 says. It's extremely high risk industry yet so intimate, the reason we charge the rate we do. Talibum Krum says. It should have scared you from the beginning. It's always been like this. Maybe the veil has been lifted finally. Megalot says. I think it's just the longer you do it the more likely you are to eventually have bad experiences. My friend got, frick, ed over in Chicago where a client paid him, cash. But as soon as he left, before he could get to his car three guys came up and robbed him, so it was basically a really clever setup. That really pissed me off. Fluffy underscore chickadee says. Holy frick. You let clients choke you. If anyone even grazes my neck with an open hand I move my hand to theirs immediately and move it. This has only happened once, and I don't think he actually intended to choke me. No wonder you're having a bad time. 
you need to change your practices, and probably all your marketing. Your clientele is shit. Somehow you are attracting shit people, and also you are encouraging it. A client shouldn't even want to choke you, let alone expect to be allowed to- You think a safe word is going to save you, when your throat is closed under a man's grip, and you can't even breath let alone speak. Of course you are terrified, you are objectively putting yourself in physical danger. Do Butterfly 6248 says. Always good to have a significant other that's willing to run in the room. I have a window that my man looks at outside, and if I open it when clients there he knows to come in BC the clients acting crazy. Revolutionary Pi 67 says. I think I'm this industry it's best to keep business and pleasure separate. Therefore, if you have a BDSM kink that's fine, but don't pursue it with clients. You are literally opening up so many gateways for a client to potentially really harm you. You should be scared of sex work, this is a very scary and unpredictable industry. But a lot of that can be avoided by having the right kind of knowledge. Breast Accountant says. Unfortunately it's the crazy that's all over popular family, socials. So much free corn and bait. Ticklitical says. I have a BDSM fetish, and I've been trained in martial arts since I was 5. If I want to engage in kink, that is my right, as long as consensuality is established beforehand. Part of engaging in kink is that it is safe, sane, and consensual. Engaging in kink with a client is not safe or sane. To that end, the fact that the act was consensual is about as relevant as your martial arts training. Athousablan says. I chose a therapist who advertised to the hobbyists, and it was the best learning experience. She opened my eyes to the way clients, very often, really feel about us, and I would never engage in BDSM kink with them knowing what I know. Be careful. This is your work, it should be enjoyable, but staying alive is pretty nice too. Gorshiaska says. It has always been like that. What you perceive as changes is merely you experiencing reality. Hey it's Miss I.I. says. This is why old ladies should screen, and all clientele should carefully do their research, before seeing a new provider point sex. Work is and can be dangerous, if you aren't careful with who you choose to be alone with point I've. Been doing this 8 years, and have seen some shite. Elachi 2019 says. I'm responding to your edit, if you know the risk of getting hurt increases massively when you do sub work, and you offer it, be prepared to get hurt. Listen to the people who know how things work, and be happy they are sharing their knowledge at all. I've been doing this forever, and it's not worse. There have always been stealers, clients go to some real shady areas trying to get a QV for 50 bucks and get rolled, ECT. Board guys have forever be ignorant on the forums. This is not new at all. You have to learn how to avoid it. Responsible underscore sport 575 says. Yikes. Persephoneros underscore x says. Girl. Being into BDSM is fine, but you should never put yourself in that position with a client. Doing dominatrix work is different, but it is a very very bad idea to allow a client to choke you. Save that stuff for your actual partners. R slash sex workers. Salty Advance 1738 says. Had a bad experience, how to avoid. So I'm going to try to be as vague as possible, because I know we don't want to get too into details. Basically I showed up, did the little Imnopolio and you're the girl from the ad dance. Everything seemed okay she then starts kind of directing me on where to put my shoes and clothes. Acts weird when I ask to turn the lights down a little, because it felt like an, or in her room, and then has me sit on the edge of the bed. Well we get started me on my back and her on top, but she doesn't put me all the way in, maybe like 2-3 two, two, inches, and just keeps doing that without going all the way down. I asked her if she was gonna put it all the way in, and she looked offended, and said she wasn't going to let me ravage her. 
let me be clear I'm not a huge guy, AVG length and slightly above AVG girth on a really good day, when Saturn is in retrograde. Basically we switched to me standing behind her and she puts a leg up on the bed. After a minimum or two she stops me and says she has a leg cramp and she thinks she should just finish me with her hand. This is 15 minutes into a 1 hour session. I'm like what do you mean finish me? It's not even been 20 minutes. Sh's like you think I'm gonna let you f me like that for an hour. I said even if you would I definition coldn't, but that's besides the point. Then she says she doesn't think we're compatible, I say you know what you're right. So I got up, got dressed, apologized for hurting or offending her and walked out. What can I do to ensure I don't have a repeat of this? Ed hates to knowingly cause a woman pain, and I was using all of my self control to not hurt her, and she didn't seem to be in pain. She was about 5, 3 and maybe 110 pounds, but not shockingly small and didn't feel any smaller down there than most. Let me know if I need to edit my post for the street says. Is this a well reviewed, well established provider? We are you paying on the low end? Medium? High end? Hathausablan says. Unfortunately this is why reviews matter, although I wish they were less graphic in nature. That's terrible. I'm the same size and I love, ahem, living large. Something is wrong with her. So sorry. Darth Succubus says. So, she was super unprofessional, but... That's kinda what you get for using low end sites, and paying lower mid range rates. I will note, that I always keep the lights on, just because low visibility increases the risk of a man taking the condom off. Also, holy smokes, endorsing online sex trafficking organizations isn't the answer, review board pimps do not have a mature understanding, of what service should be like. As a client, you kind of have to accept the risk of incompatibility, or having booked someone who isn't very good, put on my client hat more than a few times, and had to deal with this, book again with someone who's serious, and keep giving them your business. Anxious underscore but breathing says. Sounds like she might just be a beginner possibly. Rami0507 says. Possible she was maybe a little sore from previous clients, but if that's the case she really shouldn't be booking more people that day. And the way she handled it sounds terrible, to be fair, we are only getting one side of the story here. Mistress Royal says. It looks like there was something wrong with her, or maybe something happened just before you arrived. Perhaps next time check reviews, or get more info details when making a booking? Turbulent underscore issue 4434 says. It doesn't sound to me like you did anything wrong, and just the fact that you're worried you might have makes me think you're probably a considerate client. Yeah, this might be a one-off, but I'd recommend researching your next provider a little more, to get a sense of their personality, maybe they have a have Twitter you can look at? And be willing to pay a bit more if necessary. Not sure what site you're using, or where you're located, but in my city, Toronto, Trist seems to be the best. Sudden underscore mix underscore 8422 says. Just want to say it's posts, and people like this, that give me hope for the future of humans in general. It's sad that basic decency can be so hard to find sometimes, especially on social media, where we tend to share and consume negative content and interactions, but I genuinely appreciate reading this post and all of Op's comments that continue to give this woman the benefit of the doubt. We're all humans, and I try to assume that everyone is just doing the best they can with what they have. And the best we have can look different on different days. Much love to you. Op hope you have a better encounter next time. Thesius 63 says. Sometimes people have a bad day or just aren't good at what they do. I've had a range of experiences and do my best to stick with providers that I vibe with. Sounds like you do as well. Maybe the turning the lights down was a red flag and the second position may well have been uncomfortable so she called an audible. Hard to say. 
Jezebel Jade one says. The only times I've had someone turn down the lights they have either stealthed me or attempted it. Don't do that. Tosoi to space says. Sorry you had a poor time. As others have mentioned, I'd consult reviews before you book next time. I have never 100% ever had a bad time with a well-reviewed provider, 100 plus bookings. 100% of my bad times were with providers with no reviews. Redead555 says. This has been happening more often than you think. Shamefully. Dolphuka says. She's obviously in the wrong line of work. Not compatible my ass. If she doesn't want to deliver the service you paid for then she should have refunded you. Post a negative review on the relevant forums. For instance. UKP if you're in the UK, so others know to help her choose another profession. R slash sex workers. Wissafly21 says. Do your clients talk about other girls? Every single guy is telling me non-stop about girls or other clients. Mistress Royal says. It turns them on, and it's basically talk to get them off what others do and so on. Don't take it seriously. Most of the stuff is usually made up anyway. Any damage 5718 says. I hate when they talk shit about their wives. Ground Bricking at 9744 says. Personally as a male, I think it's disrespectful altogether regardless, if paying or not, but to speak about other women, when you're with a woman and that's all I can say. I know for a fact I would not like this being the other way round so why, do other blokes think women do? Talibamkrum says. I love it, when they do this. Most of my clients don't have a feminine perspective in their lives, and I'm happy to be that during their session. Angel Grace says. Not every client, but many do, yes. It's honestly annoying after me, I never know what is the truth or lies either I assume a lot of it is exaggerated, or completely not true, since the clients that do this do it in an effort to stroke their own ego slash impress me, and often these clients have a very inflated sense of self, or project an inflated sense of self, that is not consistent with reality. Hurricane Katrina says. I do not get this, but they always want to know how many men I've frick ed that day. Which I find profoundly disturbing. Yeah yeah yeah, it's dirty talk, it gets them hard, make something up. But I find it very weird, and I don't like it. So I've started saying, HMN. 73. What? No. You're lying. Maybe it was 37. Damn dyslexia. That usually shuts them up. If not, I keep saying 37. I'm not entertaining this, unless you want to pay me more. Then I'll happily tell you, i.e. lie my ass off, because I'm certainly not violating the sex workers version of HIPAA about all my clients. Fred's underscore bread says. When I first contact a lady about an appointment the only mention I will make about another woman is as a reference. During an appointment the only time I mention another woman is if the lady I'm with asks something that would require it for clarity and even then I try to keep it anonymous. If I know a lady well and have seen her often, sometimes a specific woman will come up in conversation. In those cases the lady I'm with usually brings it up as in, did you hear what happened to XXX? Or would you be interested in having Yai join us next time? Do you know her? R slash sex workers. Traveling Glyphestalist says. A frequent regular wants spare services and threatens to stop seeing me if I decline. I don't really do sex walk much. I don't advertise, never have most of my clients I get, are word of mouth and I'll only do it, if I'm comfortable with them slash at a good price, I get paid 1k a session minimum, I never offer anything bare. My health is important now I have this regular. Older gentleman, very nice and courteous. 
sees me nearly every weekend and tips me well today he messages me that he wants to keep seeing me, but he wants bear service going forward. He says he'll pay me extra and provide recent test results too. He says if that's not something I'm okay with he completely understands, but that'll be the end of him seeing me, I really don't want to. I don't need the money but it real is nice. It's not only a health thing I'm worried about, it means I'd have to get on birth control, and in my experience birth control just, frick, s with my body really badly. I guess I'm just venting. But what do you guys think? Advice? Thanks. Kindly quit says. Do not do it. Just don't. First of all, this man is putting his pleasure over your very real medical needs and boundaries. Being clear of any standard or stee should always be your first and foremost practice, as self-love and self-protection to yourself. Never ever back down on that. Secondly, if you relinquish your boundary, has going to realize that he can push other boundaries as well. I almost promise you that his next request will be for less money, or he may push you into acts you otherwise did not want. It always starts with the first nudge, just to see if you will back down or not. Put yourself in his shoes. If he just realized he wanted bear, why bother you to ask for it when he knows your boundaries? He easily could have just stopped being a regular but instead, he chose to push you on a boundary you have made very clear you were not comfortable with. This person is thinking that he has power over you because he is a regular. Those kinds of people need to learn very swiftly and firmly that it is a privilege to be with you on his part, not the other way around. I would very firmly say you know how serious this boundary is with me. Tests can be faked. I'm not comfortable, nor have ever been comfortable as you know from prior experiences with doing this. I wish you the best with finding someone who does bear, and I hope you do not catch anything. Best of luck, X I guarantee you, he will rebook regardless. This is just boundary testing at its easiest to spot. Clients don't get to threaten me with anything, and if you are not a survival sex workers, who may have to, how does this benefit you? It doesn't. He is lucky to get the chance to enjoy your body and pay you. Full stop. You owe him absolutely nothing beyond this point. He's gotten way too comfortable and is showing you his true colors, even if it takes time for that mask to slide off. If you take him back when he comes crawling, be aware he may try to stealth it. I would personally wash my hands of him. Others will come in time who will respect your safety. Yes Miss JYMJ says. Call his bluff. Oh, that's too bad. I'll miss seeing you. I enjoyed our time together, but I don't offer bear. Good luck finding a new provider. Good chance he's just trying, be a manipulative dick. Lilipu2 says. Don't compromise what you're not comfortable with, period. Even though the money might be nice, and he's willing to provide regular recent negative results, are you sure he's exclusive with you? Test results are easy to fake slash reproduce. And if you're not comfortable with BC, then you're altering your mental and physical comfort just for the bill. Don't do it, if you can afford not to. I know that not all was an afford, to pick and choose like this. But if you can afford it, don't compromise your position. You'll appreciate yourself more in the long run. Talibum Krum says. Absolutely not. Take the loss, and keep it moving. Hurricane Katrina says. You can also procure bluff him, say you've thought about it, assayed the risks yada yada, and that you decided the nice round hash of 10k every single time is acceptable. Daddis Girl says. Stop seeing him. Oh well, unless he makes your month's dollar sign, he doesn't matter, and there's always another him and better. Even if he is making your months, frick that. He doesn't care about you enough to threaten to stop seeing you, because of your boundaries. Ugh makes me regret ever treating some past long time regulars good once they pulled this on me. I said you're special to me or something along the lines and he really says you are a liar I'm not special at all to you, if we still can't do this. 
then told me to jump into a lake, and he paid me dollar sign 1 dash 3k every time we met for only an hour or two. Some will be your regular and treat you good, just to work up to crossing boundaries. I said, frick, him and kept it pushing. There's more, there's better. Calypsoboclus says. Okay but malicious compliance brain seduce female internal condoms and hope his eyesight fails him lmao. Don't ever do anything you're uncomfortable with. You got this. Lil underscore Lydia says. As a person with a few regulars that I do bear services with, do not do bear services unless you absolutely need to. I can't wait for business to pick up for me so I can finally stop seeing them. I'm applying for a private studio and I'm using fake stubs. It's so easy to fake things like that nowadays. Stick to your gut. Investigator do 9152 says. I agree with what a lot of people are saying here, but wanted to add, even if the tests are legitimate, a lot of diseases do not show up for a certain amount of time, even up to two years later I believe. And you can still spread the disease, even if you don't test positive. Do not risk it, unless you absolutely need the money, and even then, I would think hard and long before doing so, if the money is worth the risk. Considering if he is asking you, he may have other providers he sees that do offer it, making the risk even greater. Also, as a client, my personal rule is, if a provider ever provides best services, I will not see them AMD No many clients who say the same. Making one client continue to see you may in the long run, cost you more clients. Good luck and I hope it works out in your best interest. Colon close bracket. Lulovia Letsb says. Best posted on r slash sex workers, only only if you don't want advice from clients, if you feel uncomfortable providing a certain service please, do not feel pressured into doing so. If you end up doing something you aren't comfortable with then you will begin to resent him, or your body will react negatively. Split assist 3055 says. Tell him to kick rocks. Turbulent underscore issue 4434 says. This doesn't sound like a good offer for you. I wouldn't do it. Tell him you're sad to see him go but you understand. Chances are he'll come crawling back eventually. And if not don't worry another regular who doesn't try to push your boundaries will come along soon enough. Kitten Rocknall says. I'd say no. Offer a female condom. Otherwise let that word of mouth spread to replace him. R slash sex workers. Prestigious King 3614 says. Ho tactics, the art of seduction and failing. I've been doing some reading about art of seduction by Robert Greene too, and I fit the siren. So I'm putting emphasis on my wardrobe, how I speak, and trying to enhance my natural abilities I've noticed working on myself I've found some blind spots, or flaws of mine I need to fix I realize I've had an adonia for most of my life, immense risk for depression, and have a small amount of social anxiety the book talks a lot about being a fun girl, but being fun, even though I want to feels like pulling teeth trying to keep up that persona. I can't even fake laugh I feel like my default is feeling empty how do I get past this? All the conversations with my clients default to being serious, talking about life, life advice or being kind to them. All of them comment on my accent and all of them remark I can tell you're intelligent but it's not enough for me. I want to be that fun girl my job is being an escort and I refuse to give up and I want to be the best I can. Does anyone else feel this way or deal with this? What do you recommend? Throw a toy coping says. I'm client and I have chronic depression from CPTSD. Chasing the idea of the person you want to be and who you really is can be exhausting and unkind to oneself as you are trying to reject the current you. I mean, being an old soul could be your brand. I feel the connection of being a sensual old soul a person could talk to beats the fun girl everyone wants to just have sex with, especially for a bit more mature audiences. For reference I'm 30, and I'm a sensitive and moody person, and I'm good at pick apart a fake persona. I notice the little cues and acts and such, it can come off as not genuine. 
I haven't seen that many providers, but I read enough of the local board to see providers reputation gets wrecked due to bad acting. You might get burned out fast, because making yourself into someone you aren't, it isn't sustainable. I met my ATF when I was at my lowest, and I mentioned a foul song that gets me feel sentimental, and she put it on, and made out with me for the entire duration of the song. I never looked at other providers again. Her natural intimacy won me over. I feel I'm connected to a person instead of an act, while I'm perfectly aware that this is a show that she's putting on for me. Do you have any other hobbies? My provider does a good job steering convos towards lighter topics such as music and films. If you want to change for the sake of business, you'd have to be mindful about where you lead the convo. It's your show and your service, you take the charge and lead. That's enough mansplaining from me, but I hope that helps a bit from the other side of the aisle. Best luck with business. Emotional Empress says. I'm not the fun party girl. My atmosphere is calm and welcoming. My clients say I make them feel at home. Our convos always veer to life, philosophy, spirituality, and a few laughs when I drop an unexpected f-bomb here or there, or in a fanned comment. Be yourself. A better more polished version of you, but I find sex workers isn't sustainable for me when I'm behaving too far outside of my core personality. Pickle Appetent says. I'm loving the self-fulfillment and self-improvement pathway you have chosen to enable through your southwestern. Kudos to you. In order to project the persona you need to it takes time and practice and cultivating a work persona that is not so different from the real you that you cannot engage and be present whilst you occupy that persona. For me it was a question of dialing back what I wanted to keep for me and amping up what I needed to fulfill the client's needs. The more skills you acquire and master the easier it will be to sequester to yourself what you need to be yours alone and swap in or supplement what you project for work the skills you develop for work. Again this is very much a horses for courses area and you need to do what works for you. Bubbly fun time girl is great but something I could not keep up for long, so I made it an accent not the focus of my persona. My deal was cool calm confidence and control which made fun and bubbly all the more noticeable when I allowed that accent to shine. I got to a point of being the I, frick, and I know things personality, and not necessarily in that order. When you throw fun and bubbles over the top of that it comes across as seductive noy slash cheeky slash playful which makes for a huge and welcome surprise. My clients tended to be powerful men with significant responsibilities and my cool, calm and in control persona worked beautifully at the dinner table, or at a function in my fun and bubbles accent, made me seem charming and just a little mischievous. I hope this ramble helps. I can't emphasize enough upskill, 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 improve, improve, improve. Take courses, learn languages, take singing lessons, acting lessons, movement lessons, cooking courses, learn how to talk about wine, cigars, horses, business, you name it be a sponge soak up information, and above all learn how to read people in the room and deploy those skills to the benefit of your client, and by extension yourself. All the best with your career in the life. Bikali underscore Sally 916 says. One or two small glasses of Chardonnay before meeting a client helps, depending on your alcohol tolerance. Nothing more than to though. Just enough to loosen up a little bit, socially open and bubbly. My tips greatly improved when I showed more of an overall interest in conversation with a bright cheerful personality. A happy client is a generous client. R slash sex workers. Sudden underscore violinist underscore 697 says. How do you deal with clients that have lots of money? Hopefully the title makes sense. But I'm currently getting more and more clients that have money money and I just wanted to ask for a couple etiquette tips and pointers on dealing with men who do you have money as they are looking for a luxury service and I want to do an amazing job. An example, I recently did a date with a dude who gave me more than 1000. 
super cool dude, how can I make him a regular, since dudes with money, have lots of options? Should I send a cute text every so often? A cute pic? Veril Fansub says. I do not reach out to clients between bookings for discretion reasons, unless I have direct permission from them. The last thing I want, is a wife seeing my text. The only way to set yourself apart with high value clients is really just to provide excellent service, when you see them. Remember things they've told you, build rapport with little inside jokes, and bringing up things they're interested in, be an active listener, flirt, etc. It also helps to know proper etiquette, and have a wide range of interests, so you can contribute to conversation. Big money clients tend to look for an experience over just sex. Thakal Jural says. Do not stroke his ego, and reach out to him, unless it's to confirm details or respond to something he sends. When you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Once you show more interest in them, they either lose interest and cross boundaries, or become unhealthily attached. It's usually the former. My usual rule of thumb is, to not give any extra, or specialized attention, until they've become somewhat of a regular. Simply tell him you had a great time and hopefully you'll cross paths again in the near future and leave it at that. The message says. I deal with clients that have money the same way I deal with clients that don't have money. They can get in touch if they want to see me. I don't reach out to them. Lucky Shaket says. I only reach out to clients if we have established that it is okay. For many discretion is key, and unsolicited texts is a huge no-no. I do have a handful that I text to enjoy it, but only when I've explicitly asked or been told that's okay for me to do. I don't know about you, but I can smell desperate on, and I bet that the guys with big dollar sign dollar sign are keen on when girls are trying to schmoz just to keep them close. I've got millionaire clients and broke waiters that come to see me. It means more when the broke guys come, because it's that much harder for them than the money guys and tbh usually they are so much more respectful anyway. I don't know I try not to treat people differently, based on their economic class, and if I were you, I would just focus on providing an exceptional service, to everyone, so what does that look like for you? I have nice linens, mints, good smells, etc etc etc. Akalautha Spurious says. My only regular client is a whale. I'd recommend just letting him take the lead. Just know how to keep company without threatening his ego for social stuff, and be accommodating, and flexible for the sexual part. Do and act as he wants, and needs including things he might not share explicitly, that's up to your intuition. But let him be right in the end no matter what, but don't act dumb. All of that is, because men who have such success and money also tend to have high levels of entitlement and ego in accordance. Frankly speaking my regular whale is neither interested in my pre-existing snobberies nor in my explicit appreciation, including sycophancy motivated by it which is one of the most common things in their life, of luxuries he provides. He is just interested in enjoying me. Luxuries are there, because it's part of his everyday life anyways. So I focus on making the experience better. I guess I'd recommend fine dining etiquette and similar things, if you're not familiar with those though. Fuak Thuat says. I never reach out to clients first, I have a client that pays me $3000 and I don't really treat him different than anyone else on purpose, but just knowing they are paying, that does make me happy, so the session might be different than someone that pays $300. Just remember things you guys talk about show some interest, but never get a hold of them first. I always tell my clients I need their numbers, so that I'll be able to reply, since I don't answer unknown numbers, and I'll let them know, that I'll never contact them first until they do. High paying customers get my personal number instead of the ad numbers. Little Bobeep 29 says. Don't do any of that. Act cool, like you're used to hanging around moneyed people. Just be yourself. SDR Thornja World underscore W Forstead says. 
I wouldn't initiate any contact. Takamath says. Father Spray. But in London says. The exact same. Literally. R slash sex workers. Emotional Empress says. What's the biggest challenge you're experiencing within sex work right now? Is it building your business? Establishing boundaries? Saving money? Navigating dating or a relationship? Maintaining clients? Re-examining your relationship with drugs and alcohol as it relates to your work. What is your unique challenge, and what would your ideal situation look like, if this challenge was overcome? Lil underscore miss underscore you says. Scheduling issues. Crickets when I'm free, and clients all booking, when I'm busy and out of town. Waiting at the Chris says. Deciding if I should continue with it as a full time career. Also finding somewhere to live. Thega Desoft Loom says. Boundaries and burnout. Realizing I'm very picky with who I want to see, so making a lot less money now, but am way happier. Little Bobeep29 says. It is dealing with men, and having enough patience. Celestial underscore avocado says. Cops, when I run an ad, they call and try to schedule. It's scary and I have already been arrested once. I have been doing this for about a year. I got arrested in a sting 4 months ago. Now I'm having to be extra careful. Lena769 says. Realizing how many men do not know the word. No. It really boggles my brain. Legitimatorforce8731 says. My boyfriend by far. My options have gone from limited to none. He's now even uncomfortable with me selling content ugh. Lara 777 Mui says. Having lack of energy to meet clients. Slut Panic says. Not feeling well and not wanting to work. Taylor Lives 420 says. Clients who would want to make videos, I have a price for this, when I tell them it's either they stop it, or pay to record, they don't listen. Opposite Fee 3805 says. I desire having a real relationship again. This job always gets in the way, so I avoid dating. Now I'm 50 already. Also I want to learn more in a mainstream job. Tired of being so secretive etc. Need more mental stimulation slash better karma. Matondra Sediscus says. Physical energy and motivation, burnout. Mistress May says. Getting established is my biggest challenge. I think my problem is my ads did not have classier photos, so I'm dealing with time wasters and low ballers. I'm gonna try posting better photos, and see if this helps. Aubrey Amilus says. Deciding to go back to school for nursing, but the business has been slow, and I'm trying to figure out the strategy to still afloat while studying. Olivia says. IDK how to do taxes. Disho45 says. Learning how to market myself self, and balancing it with my regular job. R slash sex workers. Alert effort 5355 says. Should I hide being a smoker? Smoking is a bigger deal breaker than I thought. I have had guys abruptly block or cancel sessions after they asked if I was a non-smoker. Should I just tell them I'm a non-smoker, shower plus Listerine, and not have a cigarette beforehand? Thinukid1980 says. I'm a non-smoker. All I care about is, if you don't smell like smoke, and if I don't taste it. Smoking reduces the sense of smell and many smokers don't realize they still smell of smoke, after everything they do. Yelp now close says. Don't smoke before appointments. I haven't done this work in a few years, but when I did, the topic of smoking never even came up before, during, or after. Never. I would never waste money on more fragrances slash oral hygiene products than I already do, just to cover up the smell of smoke. 
it doesn't work lol. Non-smokers can always smell if you've had a before coming to see them, whereas the smoker can't because we become desensitized to the smell. That's why I always had a rule after I take my shower, brush my teeth, get cute and put my smell goods on I'm done smoking until I get back home and I always shower and brush in between appointments whether I'm a smoker or not. That's just law for me, even if I need to eat first, I eat before I shower and brush my teeth. This kind of routine won't be sustainable, if you chain smoke though. In that case just tell them you smoke, and deal with the loss of clientele, cuss ain't no chain smoker quitting cold turkey just for sex workers, hope that helped, or at least got a laugh good luck. Better underscore pickle underscore 640 says, Start using nicotine patches if smoking is affecting your bottom line I do massage and guys don't like a smoker voice slash cough or being able to smell it on you. Fred's underscore bread says. Being a smoker will definitely turn off some guys. Lula Violets says. Do not do this. I would hate if a client lied to me about smoking BC I think it's vile and the last thing I'd like is to kiss someone who smokes. So I think you should extend the same grace as a provider. Mstreed says. It is a big deal. I don't see clients who smoke and I have declined appointments when I smell it. BWC5654 says. Get a vape solves the smoker smell problem. Hurricana Katrina says. Abso frickin glutly. It's literally the kiss of death in this business, I swear. I'll have a cigarette, then I'll spritz my hair with Febreze, I carry 2 to 3 of the travel bottles and fill with the unscented kind, the other ones are migraine triggers. I do about 5 good squirts on my hair, to make sure I've covered all areas, then a light misting of perfume. I'll then use these really marvelous wipes I get from uni.beauty, they're called peppermint citrus shower sheets. A box of 30 runs $35 so not awfully expensive, they generally have sales and that's when I try to stock up. Any kind of baby wipe works perfectly well too, this is just my little indulgence. I'll wipe them around my upper body paying particular attention to my neck and arms, anywhere I think smoke might have touched me. Brush teeth, gargle heavily, gum and you should be good to go. I've never heard a complaint, nor has it been mentioned in a review. TTTT27 says. Why not just quit? It's a horrible habit. And no, mouthwash isn't going to cover it. Smoke gets in your hair, on your clothes, even on the walls of your house long term. Joe from Toe says. I'm a former smoker, and the smell of it turns me off a lot. Personally, I don't have an issue if you're a smoker, but I don't want to smell it. If you smoke inside your home, it's very difficult to completely eradicate the smell of smoke. It seems to permeate your skin when everything around you smells like cigarettes. Arnold Armadillo says. Client view, fwi I think the providers I have seen fall into two classes, the one who smoke and the ones who hide their smoking well. I had seen one of my regulars for three years before I found out she smokes. Turns out, she only smokes outdoors, and so her wrinkle and clothes don't smell of smoke. There are two things in play here. People who don't smoke get hypersensitive to it, and married guys are worried their wives will smell smoke on them. Ramovine 2022 says. There is nothing you can do as a smoker to make it, that a non-smoker won't notice in a intimate setting. Raja Budsnax says. I'm seeing a smoker when he brushes and uses mouthwash after a cigarette, washes his hands and face, changes clothes and waits like IDK, 30 minutes. The smell is no longer bothersome slash noticeable. It's worth noting that, since I have allergies to smoke I still have to take antihistamines when we hang out and it exacerbates an eye condition I have. If you can slash are willing to take those steps and only smoke outside, if he smoked indoors it would be a completely different ball game and switch to vape, gum or patches for nicotine fix in between, you could probably get away with it. 
If you do that though, I would accommodate for asthmatics and people with allergies by saying you live with a smoker. Mary General 625 says. I ended up quitting smoking because of it. However not smoking an hour before, and appointment and taking a breath mind, will most likely achieve the same thing. Say Cobra says. Should I just tell them I'm a non-smoker, shower plus Listerine, and not have a cigarette beforehand? So you're going to start off lying to your clients? Not a good look emo. I don't smoke, vape, and I'm very sensitive to it, so a provider who smokes, vapes, is a deal breaker for me. When, not if, I smell it, I'm going to leave with all of my money in hand. I'm not going to pay for false advertising, lying about smoking slash vaping, and be uncomfortable for the entire session. R slash sex workers. Akalalthus Spurious says. Why does my regular client keep asking me to see his friends? So I have this guy that I have been seeing quite regularly for a little more than two months. And honestly, he was the first guy I had sex with for money. I didn't know this sub or proper practices to set correct boundaries with him. So he can be a bit demanding at times, but also considerate and accommodating in many ways without even being asked. I definitely do not dread our time together. I can even say I enjoy it mostly. But most importantly, this arrangement seriously improved my financial situation. So this is not a connection I'm willing to risk. He's asking me to see a friend slash acquaintance of him, not for free obviously. He asked this before, I accepted, and it went awfully. I did set boundaries with this other guy, and I would set even stricter boundaries for this second guy. But I'm realizing there is so much I can't control. With just boundaries. I'm so anxious, because the last time even threw me into one of my worst depressive episodes for a while. The regular kinda made up for it, so I'm not holding this over his head, but I dread having to do this again. I already tried refusing it Loki, he just gave me bunch of assurances, like he did last time, and told me to take my time and think about it. Which is like you can tell me, yes, later I suppose. Worst part is that he calls this a private favor so like he won't even give me any details about who this other guy is, and that alone sends my anxiety level through the roof. I genuinely don't get his motivation. Like what is he trying to accomplish? Am I just too distanced from their mask life to be able to understand their motivation? Like why why why? Frankensteer69 says. This is weird as hell, and I would never do it without info about the friend. Full Metal Sports Bra says. TBH never once has a client referred to me by another client, been a good experience. A referral does not mean they get to skip screening, or push your boundaries in any way whatsoever. Emo you should drop this dude, there's something utterly bizarre about his insistence that you do this, makes me think he's having his friends secretly record you or something. Free Spirit 1122 Zarxo says. I would tell him that you need to screen this friend period. You should never see anyone without screening them. Babajil Vibba says. I personally find it very shady and every single time someone wrote me saying it was a referral it was some shady bullshit. TTTT27 says. Should ask him, not us. Some guys are very out with their friends that they see a sex walker and don't mind referring a friend to one. If you're going to see the friend, screen him as you would any new client. Don't talk to one client about the other other than in the broadest generalities. Hurricane Katrina says. His motivation is that he gets props and high fives and dude, you damn man, from his buddies. Guadam to you. Are you screening these other guys, like you did him? Anxious look. Comprehensive horse 30 says. It sounds like he's taking a fee for setting you up with the non-men, who are probably blacklisted. He's becoming your pump for dangerous clients. Yes Miss JYMJ says. I'd be happy to if he passes all my required screening. 
If he pushes back say I agreed last time and your friend wasn't very respectful. You might be great friends with these guys, but they act completely different around women. So they need to be vetted like any other new client. Much Chocolate says. Sounds like you're very uncomfortable after what happened with his first friend. Just tell him you appreciate the offer, but no longer accept referrals. You enjoy your time with him and are getting some nice cash too. No reason to add the stress of another potentially bad match with a friend. Existua says. Am I just too distanced from their mask life to be able to understand their motivation? Like why why why? If what he's doing is making you uncomfortable that's no good, and I wouldn't like it if you didn't, but here's my take, I really really like sloppy seconds. Like I'd get high as a kite off of it. I quit drinking and doing drugs years and years ago, but I get high from sex. And the idea of a woman having sex with someone, and then still wanting slash having sex, and then arranging the more sex with another man, and me getting to be that man is the most erotic thing I can envision, and is my ultimate thrill. As for his motivations, no idea. The only way to know is to ask, and ask follow up questions, to make sure you're getting a sincere answer. But if he were I, what I described above would be my motivation. r slash sex workers. Mathematician 3813 says, Dating advice. I've recently started dating a guy. He knows what I do. I've explained to him that I would like him to not sleep with other women and that if it is something he'd like to do, that it's not the kind of relationship I'm looking for and we should part ways. He said that he doesn't want to be with anyone else, but he keeps bringing up do you see the double standard, you can sleep with X amount of men. But if I did you'd be highly upset how do I handle this situation? Am I not seeing his point because I do see a big difference between the two and how do I get my point across? Hurricane Katrina says. Not really sure you can. It's a huge double standard you're asking for. Binky Batisks says. While there are some guys out there who would be okay with this, it's is very very rare and not easy to find. The average guy will not be okay with this. And if they do agree initially, they will most likely end up cheating. Open relationships in situations like this are more common. Tina Princess says. A. Sorry babe but it is a double standard. If he charges those women you'd still be annoyed. Gotta know what you want. You also don't have to, frick, around to earn money you can do only fans and online cam. RudePilot1515 says. The only standard that exists in any relationship is the standard you and your significant other define and consent to. Some people, both men and women, put sex on a pedestal and make it some magical sacred thing. Some don't. All you can do is tell them how you feel, why you feel that way, and hope they accept it. If not, then it wasn't meant to be anyways. You have every right to define your own relationship boundaries, but at the same time, so does he. Nobody is wrong here, because we all chose who want to be with, and who we don't. Throw a toy coping says. Work sex is still sex. Sophia twice says. It is a double standard and you're wrong. I don't understand the issue though, he's expressed that he doesn't want to sleep with anyone else. But you saying he keeps bringing up the conversation is because he's frustrated that you don't see his very obvious argument and you are too stubborn to understand or back down. The fact that you came to the internet to get clarification when he is already demonstrating it to you likely means that there is no convincing you otherwise. He said it doesn't want to sleep around. Listen to him. Drop it. Or don't and light the fuse of self-destruction. Your call. Champagnavixen underscore says. I can understand why people here think it's a double standard, because at the end of the day, yeah you are physically having sex with other people. I personally believe that sex workers can be in monogamous relationships, but only if their partner truly sees sex work for what it is, a job. 
it doesn't sound like your partner is there, and tbh a lot of these types won't ever accept it. Pursuing sex for pleasure, and performing sex for whoever happens to walk through the door are two completely different experiences. How would it be fair for a partner to, frick, people they enjoy, and who they are attracted to, while my end of the bargain is dissociating while I, frick, old men with halitosis, who can't wash their ass properly. Hardly a double standard, if you ask me. Whiskey Jack 1982 says. What you are expecting from him is insane. Heavy Historian 508 says. I do not think it's a double standard point it's your job. If he makes any money off sleeping with women, he can go ahead and do so, if not, it's unacceptable. Stay ugly underscore says. The sex I have at work is a performance, the clients I see are objects that require entertainment and a stranger to vent to, it's a job. If my partner can't see that then I can't date them. I think it's perfectly valid to want a monogamous relationship outside of sex work. White underscore hand says. Meh, I don't get satisfaction from my clients so yeah, I'm in a monogamous relationship. I'd be upset if my partner had sex with someone else. Spiritual underscore team underscore 6332 says. He's a sucker, he really wants you, but only the version of you that he won't get jealous over. Therefore deep down he wants you to retire, but don't have the balls to tell you yet. Proceed with caution. By the way salute to you for being honest about your work I really wish 100% of the sex workers, current and former, were as honest as you. Ripstershadalksks says. I mean it's definitely a grey area of a double standard. There are reasonable arguments for either side. I think you just need to clear talk to him about why you don't want him, and explain how often your work is not that enjoyable to you. Communication is your best tool. Runor Agypsy underscore Ors says. It's the goalposts that you put up that he has to play the game to, and the same goes for you. If he says okay, and then leans on you about it later, he is disingenuous. Most guys eventually will find an issue with it, and can't separate the job from the work. For him to sleep with other women, you would assume he would have to invest time and energy into them, and form some sort of bond. If he isn't for it, then ditch him. Your life is complicated enough with the different men you see you don't want your downtime occupied by his immature wants and needs. Always up for it says. You will most likely get a few guys fully understanding and accepting of the parameters. Basically knowing it's too much for them long term, but they get to have sex with you regularly until then. I'm sorry to say on behalf of men. The guy listed here makes up far over 50% of us as a gender. Yours is out there somewhere though. Good luck. Kiangl says. It's the biggest double standard ever. Wild underscore arrival underscore 7802 says. The only standards that exists in any relationship are the standards you and your significant other define and consent to. I've seen every type of relationship you can think of, and you would be surprised what some people make work that you or I would never in a million years think would be possible. That being said, all you can do is tell your significant other how you feel, why you feel the way you do, and hope they understand. If they don't then it isn't the right relationship. You have every right to define your relationship boundaries, but it's important to note that so does he. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.